What's up Messy Mob? It's your girl Messy Maya and I'm back again with another video. So today we're going to be recapping Are You The One Episode 5. Girl, this episode was so messy. I'm so ready to recap it and get into it. I'm sorry, I was trying to be nice but that bitch. You look a mess. So last episode at the matchup ceremony, they did end up getting four beams. So that's exactly where we left off within the episode. Um, yeah, so they were partying, celebrating their new victory because they got four beams, which is a, an accomplishment for them. Because like I said, they're not really that good. So the bar is very low. So to them, four beams is okay. But in reality, I'm just like, it's, that's not even half the house. But you know what I'm saying? Kudos to y'all because it's progress for them. So while they're partying in um, Brendan's interview, it shows that Brendan basically expresses to us that he feels like Julia Ruth is his match and he really likes her and he could see them going far, this, that, and the third. And he also mentions Nate and he says that he does not care about Nate nor the connection that him and Julia Ruth have built. Also during the party, Will and Jordan are talking to Brendan, basically telling him that he really needs to push push it with Julia Ruth and try to get her in the truth booth just so he can see whether she is his match or not. So the next morning, everyone, of course, is in high spirits, especially because they had a wonderful night. Hamoudi and Maicha are still vibing. I absolutely love them. I know at first, um, during one of the recaps, I did tell you guys that I just don't see it with them because of their vibe, but I'm definitely, the more they're starting to get to know each other, it's definitely showing on screen. I think that they are so cute together. They look cute together. They vibe together. I just think that they're a really good couple. Micah says the more that she's starting to get to know Hamoudi, she just looks forward to waking up and spending more time with him. And I thought that that was absolutely adorable. You know you really like somebody when both of you are just... The feeling is mutual. You both are just glowing around each other. And that's definitely the vibe that I get from Micah and Hamoudi. They, every time they speak to each other, they're just smiling. They're glowing. It's literally no drama. It's all positive vibes. And I can get with that. I really do like them as a couple. So speaking of cute couples, I absolutely adore Anissa and Akel. Y'all already know this by now. I talk about it every single recap. So anyways, they're definitely number one on my list. It's to the point, y'all, like if they're not a match, I'm definitely probably going to start watching the show. I'm just joking. But yeah, I really do hope that they're a match. So anyways, while everyone is vibing in the morning, um, Anissa and Akel are basically in the room just letting each other know... Um, Basically just reassuring each other that they both feel like that they're each other's matches and they just share a really cute moment and they also do their little handshake that I do love. One thing I do love about them is that the fact that um, them being themselves just comes so natural. I think that it is so cute because I feel like if you cannot be yourself around your partner, then like what are y'all really doing together? But you can tell that they definitely have broke the barrier of their personality and they just let it loose every time they speak. So I would hate to be the one to dim the mood, but I'm going to do it anyway. So the next scene cuts to Leo and Brooke kissing on the bed. I'm so over these two. It's just really like the fact that they know that they're a confirmed no match and they're still trying to pursue each other instead of branching out into the house and trying to actually play the dating game. It's just so weird to me and selfish. I'm so over them. Next, next scene, please. And before y'all say that I'm tripping, I'm not the only one that feels like this. Um, after they play that scene with them kissing on the bed, um, it shows multiple interviews with the housemates. I think it was Mikey, Ollie, and someone else. Um, they basically said the same thing that I said, that no one even gets a chance to talk to or flirt with or get to know Brooke or Leo because they're always all up under each other which again is very selfish and it's just like at this point why are y'all even there that morning also Courtney and Will were seen flirting 
Ollie and Julia are also seen sitting down. No, actually, they were laying down and they were just basically talking about Julia Ruth and her dilemma between two guys, Nathan and Brendan. So to me, Nathan is the better choice. Brendan, to me, is just kind of toxic, um, especially with the thing that he pulled with Cece, the way that he basically had sex with her multiple times. They got up to the matchup ceremony. He dissed her in front of everybody and embarrassed her in front of everybody, turned around, apologized, had sex with her again, and then dumped her the next day. So Brendan, to me, is a little bit of a hot mess. But girl, if that's who you want in your life, that's just who you want in your life. That has nothing to do with me, girl. Go ahead. So Will and Leo are also by the pool talking. Will is telling Leo how he is starting to fall for Courtney. And he's starting to get to know her a little bit more. And he would like to basically, you know, <laughs> he said he would basically like to kiss her and stuff like that. And then Leo also reveals that he is a smashing Brooke. And I'm just like, boy, like, you're proud of that. I'm not going to lie. It's to the point now where every time Leo and Brooke comes on screen, I get irritated because I just don't like selfish people. And I feel like they are very selfish. I feel like they're putting themselves ahead of what the objective of the fact they're putting themselves before everyone. Not only that, they're putting themselves before the game. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, is it just me or... Does Will look like Ronnie from Jersey Shore? Like, do y'all see that when Ronnie was younger? So do y'all not see that? Will looks better, of course, but I'm saying like, do y'all see the resemblance? So Cammie does come back and she gathers the group together, of course, to announce the next challenge. So the next challenge is basically another quiz is not these are not even challenges i'm so over these challenges i said this the last recap they're not even challenges they're basically quizzes like i can't i can't i can't i can't so this quote unquote challenge is basically body or brains so the guys had to basically say which girl prefers body brains or both like do y'all hear how boring that sounds like are you fucking kidding me like there's like no thought behind these challenges so the guys do the challenge and once they come back after they're done cammy does come back as well and she does announce who was the highest score and who was the lowest score both of them got to choose their dates so the lowest one who scored was brendan and the highest one who scored was will Will, of course, chose Courtney, and Brendan, of course, chose Julia. So, Brendan scoring the lowest did not surprise me at all. Like I said, any interaction that Brendan has had at this point with a girl is basically him having sex with her. I have not seen Brendan have an intelligent conversation with any of the girls so far. So, yeah, him scoring the lowest really did not surprise me at all. So even though Brendan did choose Julia Ruth, Nathan did look a little mad, but in his interview, he did reassure us that he was confident and he knew damn well that they weren't a match anyway, and he knows that Julia Ruth knows where home is, basically. So once Brendan and Will chose their dates, the couples do leave to go out for their dates and stuff. And then Brooke does tell us that she is starting to get discouraged because she's never chosen for a date. Which is just like, girl, no shit. No one's going to choose you for a date if you're fucking on Leo every single night. Like, who's really going to choose you? Like, you're not even get, you're not giving any guy, you're not giving any guy a chance to even get to know you. Why would they choose you if you're laid up with Leo every single day? I wouldn't choose you. But moving on. Wait, no, I'm not going to move on yet. I will say one thing that I did like about Brooke. Cause I know I be talking, I know I be talking my shit about Brooke, but Brooke basically, when she did say that, she said that she needs to change some stuff up because, like she said, it's starting to get discouraging, which is the smartest thing that Brooke has said this whole entire episode or time that she's been in the house. She does definitely need to switch stuff up because she's starting to realize that no other guy in the house is even going to approach her because she's always laid up and up under Leo all the time. So Will, Courtney, 
Brendan and Julia go ahead and go on their date. They went on a jet ski and then they had their little one-on-one -on -one date. When they were on a jet ski, that was so fun. It definitely made me want to go on one. The girls were riding the boys. They were they just look they all just look so cute together. So anyway, um after the jet ski, they did sit down and have their one-on-one -on -one dates. Will and Courtney go first, and must I say, these two look so good together. They really do complement each other a lot. Um, as far as personality and the way the conversation flowed, the conversation between them did flow really good. I really did enjoy watching them on their date. Um, they basically talked about what they need in their next relationship, and they realized that they both could give that to each other. And they really think that they are each other's match, which I really do hope that they are a match because they really are cute together. So again, Julia and Brennan were also on a date with each other and their one-on-one -on -one date was also cute. I was pleasantly surprised. I know that I'm always talking my shit about Brennan, but yeah, their date was really cute. They talked about everything that needed to be addressed and remember um just want you guys to keep in mind that these two did hook up the very first night but they ended it very fast because they reminded each other of their exes and just realized that they weren't going to work out so they did address that which was really good uh, you know what i'm saying just address the elephant in the room Brendan was telling Julia that he lives a very wild lifestyle back home, but he will be willing to basically stop the partying and stuff to get serious with her. But on the other hand, Julia was just like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have, I don't want to be the one that's going to stop your life and stop you from having fun and being you. Which I do understand both sides because Brendan is basically like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to show you that I'm serious, but Julia is also like, I don't want you to stop what you're doing now and then you end up resenting me in the future because I feel like that does happen with a lot of relationships. When someone in the relationship basically has to either change themselves or change something that they do to um, basically accommodate the other person and then in the future that person ends up resenting their partner for it. And they are both positive that they will be each other's matches. By the end of the date, they did share a long tongue kiss. I wasn't mad at it. I was, I did kind of feel bad for Nate. You know what I'm saying? Because Nate is at home all confident. He's like, yeah, they're not a match, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, and then she kisses um, Brendan. So I did kind of feel bad for Nate because while her and Brendan did end things, her and Nate was building something, so I don't know. Julia Ruth is something, she is something special, y'all. So Danielle and Leo are laying by the pool, and I'm not going to lie, it is a little refreshing seeing Leo speak to somebody other than Brooke, <laughs> because at this point, Brooke is his whole entire personality trait and his only personality trait. Same thing with Brooke. Leo is her only personality trait at this point. Um, so it was refreshing to see they were basically talking about um, the him and Brooke situation Danielle was bold enough to tell him what everyone in the house was scared to she told him that no one minds that he is still pursuing Brooke but he could at least try to pursue other women as well in terms of trying to get to know them and try to find his perfect match and I totally agree with this um, because it's one thing for you to still pursue Brooke because you already built something with her and you like her but it's a whole nother thing to pers keep pursuing Brooke and to completely shut everyone else out and you guys wonder why you guys aren't making any progress you know what I'm saying so I definitely agree with Danielle and I'm glad that she told him that so after their conversation they did hug it was a little bit of a flirty hug, but I didn't take it too serious because this is really my first time even seeing him and Danielle speak. So we'll see how they are later down the line. So everyone does gather back up with Cammie to basically discuss Will, Courtney, Brendan, and Julia's date together. Um, the two couples kept it short and sweet, and then Cammie told them who was the voted couple that was going to go into the truth booth. So the house did vote Julia and Brendan to go into the truth booth. I wasn't mad at this. I'm actually, I was actually happy to find this out just so we can see whether they're a match or not. Um, so they walked to the truth booth, y'all. 
and we do find out after a suspenseful wait that they definitely are a match. So this is the house house's very first match of the whole entire season. So as you would imagine, everyone was very happy, including Brendan and Julia. They immediately started to kiss and hug each other. They seemed very happy in the moment. So they go back to the house. Everyone's celebrating. Um, even Nate goes up to Brendan. He wasn't bitter at all. He went and hugged Brendan and con congratulated them. So during the celebration of their first match, y'all know that they got a match. Um, during the celebration, while everybody was popping bottles and dancing and celebrating, Will did pull Brooke aside by the pool and basically told Brooke that she needs to basically be open-minded to try to, you know, be open-minded to try to get to know everyone else in the house and not being so stuck up Leo's ass because basically that's what she's doing. And of course, Brooke doesn't want to hear this shit. She's basically brushing him off and telling him, oh, I have been trying to get to know everybody. But you know what I'm saying? They know the truth. No, you haven't, girl. But towards the end of the conversation, she did agree with Will that she definitely does need to open her heart to other people because her and Leo are not a match. So while everyone is partying and celebrating as well, what does Julia Roof does? Julia Ruth pulls Nate to the side, holds his hand, brings him upstairs to their bedroom, and she gets on top of him and straddles him and starts kissing him. I'm just going to get straight to the point. They were talking at first, flirting, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and what does she do? Mid-conversation, she gets on top of him and they start kissing. Are you fucking serious? You, like, girl, if I, if, if I wanted, if I, you know what? If I say what I wanted to say, I would probably get canceled. And, you know, I'm I'm new to this YouTube stuff, so I don't want to get canceled within, like, my first month of starting YouTube. So I'm going to just shut the hell up on what I really want to say. But she was so fucking wrong for this. Long story short, they were doing that. Brendan caught them. And then the whole time that Brendan was tr actually trying to confront her about it, Julia Ruth gaslights him the whole entire time. And I know that I talk shit about Brendan sometimes because I do think that he can be a little toxic. There's no way that I watched this and I, I, there's no way that I couldn't, I couldn't feel bad for him. I felt so bad for him. I felt so bad for him. You know what I'm saying? He's sitting here, he's trying to pack up his stuff and he's looking for her, calling her wifey, wifey, where you at? Where you at? I'm packing up my stuff. He's literally so excited, y'all. Just got done celebrating. When they were in the truth booth and they found out they were a match, he kissed her. He was celebrating with the housemaids. He was packing his stuff to go. And what happens? He go upstairs and sees Julia Ruth straddling Nate. Wow. Speechless. I cannot believe she did that. I still cannot believe that she did that, you know? It's just so disappointing. The very first match in the house... And this is what happens. You know what I'm saying? They just had a good ass date. They just found out they were each other's matches. They both kissed each other. So Julia Ruth was clearly happy. You know what I'm saying? And then what does she do? She like literally betrays him within the same night. So it's like even if he does forgive her, in the back of his mind, that thought is always going to be there of what she's capable of because y'all aren't even dating yet. And look what you're doing already. Y'all are not even together, like, officially. And look what, look at the signs. Like, you're already showing hella red flags, sis. What? Because if I was Julia Ruth and I would have found out that, found out that Brendan was my match, I would have literally cut Nate off that same night. Like, are you fucking serious? Are you for real? Yeah. I'm going to get off this subject because I'm going to get mad. I don't want to say nothing <laughs> too mean because my mouth is very reckless. So I'm going to just shut the hell up. Anyways, long story short, the next morning, they sit down and talk again. Julia Ruth apologized for the very first time. You would think that if you did something like that to somebody, that you would apologize as soon as it happens. No, she apologized in the morning. And to me, it just wasn't sincere at all. I was over it. I w really wanted to skip it because Julia Ruth, like, now she just makes me sick. Like, <laughs> like every time she comes on the screen, I'm, I'm just sick to my stomach now because of what I know the type of person that she is. 
And yeah, so they agreed to be friends. Rightfully so. And it sucks because they have to be in the honeymoon suite together. So that's going to suck. But they still have six weeks left in the house. So I don't know if they are going to rekindle things. But like I said, even if they do rekindle things, that thought is always going to be in the back of Brenda's mind. And he's seen it. So that image as well is going to always be in his mind. So we'll see what happens with their situation. So remember when I told you guys that Will basically pulled Brooke aside the night before and told her about her situation with Leo and how she basically needs to stop being around him and start opening her mind and her heart to everyone else in the house. So yeah, so Brooke pulls Leo aside and tells Leo that's exactly what she's going to do. She's going to give everyone else a chance. You're not my match. So it's time for us to stop, you know, being selfish and play the game. And Leo's stupid ass is just like like you know what i'm saying like a little bitch boy like no 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 i, I don't want to do that no but it's like you you selfish bitch you selfish bitch like she's trying to do the right thing and you still don't want to do the right thing so yeah later on everyone meets up at the matchup ceremony and it is the ladies turn to choose so after every lady gets done choosing their potential match Cammy does call out Nathaniel once he gets called up to the stand. Basically, like, like you know what I'm saying? What we all were thinking. Like, are you serious? Like, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. And I really, that's what I like about Cammy. You know what I'm saying? I really like Cammy because no one else called him out on that shit. Like, even Brendan. Brendan didn't even call him out. So I was so happy to see somebody tell him about himself. But of course, Nate wasn't trying to hear that shit, so he shut it down real quick. He was just like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, and da, 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 da. And it's just like, you don't want to talk about it, but you did it, boo. And did. So, after the ceremony, we find out that the housemates only got one beam. Which really sucks because three of the couples were my favorite so far. So that means that at least two of them if not all of them, are not a match, which really sucks. And I'm speaking about Akel and Anissa, Will and Courtney, and Maicha and Hamoudi. It just makes me so sad because, you know what I'm saying? That means that more than half of those couples that are my favorites aren't matches, which makes me sad because they vibe so well. But honestly, if I had to pick, I would say that I feel like Akel and Anissa are perfect matches. Only because they are one of the only couples that actually remained the same from the week before and they still had one beam. Everyone else had different people, were matched up with different people. So overall, this group really sucks when it comes to this whole matching thing. I've never seen anything like it. It's just the simple fact, you know what I'm saying, that the very first matchup ceremony, they got zero matches. And then now we're on, what, week five? We're on week five, episode five. And they literally doubled back three times. And now they're at only one beam. Like, are you serious? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they're not. This group is not good. Cammie, again, she does scold them because it's like, Y'all only have six weeks left and y'all are literally making little to no progress with each other. And it's, <laughs> I don't know, this group, this batch, this, this cast is something. This cast is definitely something. So let me know your thoughts on this episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm so sorry that I did get this video out late, but I promise you guys every Wednesday, I'm actually going to just record um, the recap right after I watch the episode, just so I can get it out that same day. Again, sorry for the delay. Love you guys. Love you, Messy Mob. Bye.